From TPN at technophilespodcast.com, I'm David Geisler, and this is the Technophiles Podcast. Here's the thing. Everybody knows the problem with passwords. You can even throw them through one of those, um, the yeah. software that just cycles through the numbers. You know, teenagers hack passwords for fun. This Tuesday, Krista Lee leads a discussion about web security and passwords. After the break, the cast discusses the existence of a second space elevator initiative. All these worlds are yours except Europa. Attempt no landing there because this is the Technophiles 260th episode. Hey everybody, welcome to the show tonight. <laughs> I'm here with the regular cast. Wow. Crystal Lee Malone is here, Tony Stiglitz, and V Loves. <laughs> everybody. It's Tuesday. Hey. Just chilling out. Yeah. Just in the middle of our week. Chilling Just chilling on Tuesday. That's really that's chill. Like, I party cold. every night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a really chill guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, everybody. How you doing? Tonight, we are talking about a couple different things. Mm-hmm. Crystal Lee, we are talking about a story that you have brought to the table here about... Oh, yes, the passwords are dead. Yes. <sighs> All right. <laughs> We're doing it. Passwords are so, dead, mathematically. It's true. Well, I hope... Yeah. I'll, we'll have to try to keep ourselves focused a little bit. And then, uh, <laughs> we'll, even if that's <laughs> the longer the half of this episode, I'm that. okay with it. And then at the end, I have some space elevator updates. Tony, do you recall... I think your first story ever on the it show was, was about a space was elevator. A, a youth of back, all of maybe less than a in year ago. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys recall back way back in 2014? Uh, yeah. The fall of last year. Uh, mm-hmm. I was still a, in school then. I was a fresh-faced young lad. Oh, fresh He was the new guy back Heart, then. I was. Heart full of hope and joy. Now yep. it's, you're the uh, you're the senior after me. You're the um, you're the grizzled yeah. old vet. He's the grizzled old vet now. Uh, That's what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Grizzled young man. Well, grizzled. Yeah. grizzled. Either way. Grizzled. Take, but like in a cool yeah. way. Like in a really, like yeah, a really cool nonetheless. way. Like a uh, lumber sexual way. I hate, oh, like yeah. I hate that word so <laughs> much. Yeah. But yeah, maybe. The joke like, wasn't complete without You belong it. in Left 4 Dead. Grizzled that way. You belong as a character in Left 4 Dead. The video game. Yes. Got it. You deserve, like, you know what you belong you deserve to be. a life of <laughs> sadness and Left torment. For death. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds die. kind of mean. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, hey, I was thinking about the video you know what? Every character in that everyone. video game is like a regular person, but they're grizzled and they're ready to go because they're yeah. going to just shoot Because everyone zombies. they love is dead. Yeah. In the, in the context of that game, yes, that's wow. true. That's why. Thanks, that's why they're grizzled. <laughs> well, I'm not, no, no, we're just, you guys are just digging me a hole and throwing <laughs> me in it, aren't you? Just keep just on joking digging. around. Joking around. Crystal Lee Malone. Hello. You have a topic here. <laughs> I do. So it's, it's, this is becoming a... It's, I'm starting... It's fun. We all have different styles of topics that we submit is what I'm starting to notice. Mm-hmm. And Crystal Lee has another, this is how it is and I don't know if I like it type of story. Um... Okay, so usually yes, but this one's more like, this is how it is... But I don't have an answer. So for let's do this. Let's talk it about out. this. Is specifically, I think we should note that this is actually we're discussing uh, an article that did uh, get posted on Wired.com uh, mm-hmm. last week, and the um, the title of the article I think was not "Passwords Are Dead," but it was I don't have it up yet. Actually. Kill the password. Kill a the password. string of characters won't protect you. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to realize that that is true in our world. So, oh, Crystal Lee, for sure. Right. Why don't we just get into it? Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, basically what I brought in here was a thought piece, right? There's no new tech. I suppose that's really what I mean. I gave you a hard time. I apologize. But um, it's a thought topic. Than it, yes. more than a, uh, I, I, you did just ask, you know, a social scientist to join the group. <laughs> you love it. I wasn't so, making fun of it at all. This is what you I, get. I, I wasn't. Um, Guys, let's just talk about it. Let's talk about how we feel. And how everybody else feels. Well, you know, and in some ways, this is this yeah. is kind of like that. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing. Everybody knows the problem with passport, passwords. I almost said passports. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, right? People get hacked. Passports are oddly not... I don't know why we trust them so much as well, by the way. Yeah. Um, passports. Yeah, that's a good point. But if you're ever broke, a U.S. passport... No, just kidding. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh no, right. Everybody knows this. We, there's stories about being hacked all the time. Passwords are really easy to guess. You can even throw them through one of those, um, 
Oh, I just blanked. One There's of the, software when, that'll guess it. Yes, thank you. The yeah. software that just cycles through the numbers. Um, mm-hmm. You know, teenagers hack passwords for fun. They even mm-hmm. talk about that here, right? They specifically said for lulls, yep. like they do. Oh, Matt yeah. Honan specifically wrote this. Oof. Right. Thank lulls. you. So, but here's the problem, right? What do we replace it with? And and this and this doesn't give. This, this gentleman. This gentleman got hacked, and and it and it sucked. And right. So now he studies what we can do and how easy it is for some people to hack it so why don't we talk about ways that passwords can be hacked first and then let's imagine some ideas on where hopefully technology could go um but let's do some pie in the sky let's do some blue sky solutioneering here Mm -hmm. all right um okay so there's two main groups that he mentions in here and one was the foreign syndicates and the other were teenagers yeah um the foreign syndicates um of course are um scary in that they'll get your passwords they're organized um you know you can buy them on places like silk road when that was a thing not Mm -hmm. silk yeah it was silk road thank you um uh right but then the teenagers at the same time are honestly i'm more scared of the teenagers because they're the ones that are just kind of screwing around yeah they're the ones that are going to go in and be like i wonder what i can do and then just try it yeah right like I, I feel like i mean granted i'm tracking my imagination but i feel like if a syndicate got my information i'm gonna go change all my passwords cancel my credit cards like mm-hmm. that's gonna be the only mm-hmm. thing the teenager i'm worried about is going to you know hack my twitter and start tweeting my boss you know yeah. which would be a much mm-hmm. Just socially ruin you. Yes. Yeah. Which can be worse. Yes, exactly. Uh, That's like usually the first line of attack for those kind of hacks with the teenagers. Yeah. I've seen in recent months two very good pro wrestlers. One's Instagram got hacked posts of penises Oof. and um, racist slurs. Mm-hmm. And then eventually he recovered it. It got hacked again, and the hacker was like, come on, put a better like password system in here. You're mm-hmm. doing a crappy job mm-hmm. of protecting your own account. He finally got control of it again. And then, just a week ago, another wrestler got his Twitter hacked, racist slurs, mm-hmm. yada, 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 follow this one weird account. And yeah. just like every, everybody's, you know, they fell for it. They go follow the dude because, oh, adult Sizzler told me to. Well, one of the key problems that's happening right now is if I had to, I know that if I had to imagine how many passwords I have right now, I have a little, I have a hard copy paper grid <laughs> where I keep all my passwords. Yeah. <laughs> and I think there's like 40 accounts right now that I have, be it, mm-hmm. be it all the different, you know, Twitters and just Google Drives and a- a- iClouds and everything. Like you get a lot of them after a while, even oh, yeah. like little things. Yeah. Right. Map my ride from my bike obviously has to have it. You know, like right. everything has an account these days. Mm-hmm. And one of the problems is that, yes, passwords are hackable, but if you're using, like, the same password across a lot of things or something, a lot of times that's what ha- what will happen is maybe someone can hack something that's a little easier, like an email, mm-hmm. but then they, they'll, if they can hack that one and get that password, they're going to try it on some of your other yeah, accounts. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the real problem is sometimes, not the real problem, the real problem is that we're still using passwords, but part of the problem is that a lot of times people don't realize still how important that is even if you're using 20 characters in your password yeah right yes that's technically a little safer than if you're just using six mm-hmm. or right. something like that but one of the things that he noticed that matt noticed and he put in his article here that i found shocking is that still statistically one of the most used passwords is one two three four five six yeah passwords, I mean, are just, yeah the idiots. word password the, is still number the word one. password and then mm-hmm. one two three four five six are like some of the right. most used and you know i used to do a thing where i kind of had like Tiers of passwords. So I would be like, oh, these are the pa- this is the password I use for my social media stuff. This is the password oh. I use for like all my money stuff. Mm-hmm. This is the password I use for all my email stuff. But it occurred to me that even that wasn't good enough because if you get into one money thing, right. you, you know, like I'm not going to make my things. Twitter password the same password as my bank account. Right. I, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. But some people do. Right. And it's a two way street here. Like, you, yes, passwords aren't the best way for us to protect our accounts anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, part of the reason it's easy is because maybe people aren't being smart about their passwords. So I hand this back to the table. I didn't want to soapbox there too much. Well, no, I mean, that's actually a lot of good points. And part of the problem that I would add onto what you just said is um, human memory. So if you have 40 accounts, 
and you need to remember 40 different passwords or then yeah. which password goes with what, right? Because yeah. I'll oh. do this sometimes where oh, I sit God. down to Facebook and I put in a password <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, that's not the Facebook password. Well, maybe it's, it's this one. one. Oh, no, it's the other yeah. one, right? So I've I, gotten it, locked it, out of so many accounts because of that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, like, it's like, oh, hey, bank, I'm calling again. Forgot well, it. a lot of times hackers say that it's never about actually the software. It's about always the human element. It's always like mm-hmm. hacking Social the human part. Yeah. Yes, it's, yeah. it's about calling the, uh, the security, not the security desk, but the help desk or something. Right. And you can kind of say, oh, no, you know, oh, I just, I don't know. I'm not going to yeah. sit here and pretend a scenario. But, we, you know, you can have someone, you can have enough information that they can then right. verify you're talking all to a that human. In- the human oh. is the one that can get yeah, gray yeah, yeah, where yeah, the yeah, text yeah. and the passwords can't. So actually, uh, last semester, um, I read this book that I, I, parts of it I assigned to my kids. Um, I want to say it's called We Are Anonymous by Parmi Olson. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Tony's fact checking. Um, But she talks in there a lot about what you're talking about, about the social engineering, calling people up. Or the other thing people will do is they would... uh, call somebody or contact them on Facebook and tell them hackers were coming after them. You know, they know because for some reason. Um, and then the people would just give them the password, like not yeah. even claiming that they were from a corporation, right. just saying, you know, oh, somebody over on Reddit or on one of these other sites is talking about how they have like naked pictures of you. And mm-hmm. if you give me your account password, then I can help blah, blah, blah. Really and they sad. would pass it over. That's mm-hmm. the human part. Right. Yep. Um, there, sometimes it can get trickier. Obviously, we all know that like you can have fake links to fake mm-hmm. sign ins and stuff like yep. that. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Every once in a while, I'll get like a Facebook sign in that I'm not fully into like I'm like I'm not exactly sure where that one came from or like a little window yeah. sometimes it can be a piece of JavaScript so it's a sub window that pops up mm-hmm. and especially on mobile that can happen sometimes oh, yeah. yeah and you have to be really careful you have right. to cancel out and stuff like that mm-hmm. I will say so you were talking about the 40 passwords if I may offer this mm-hmm. at least for now at least for now this is the way I've decided to get around it I have now I don't have passwords that I memorize I have a logic that builds a password and I memorize the logic. Mm-hmm. In other words, I know that the fourth letter will always be the, this is not it, mm-hmm. fifth letter of the website I'm on. Like stuff like that. Oh, sure. sure. You know? sure. And I always know that like this, the sixth character will be... Um, uh, you you know, make whatever. arbitrary rules. Arbitrary sure. rules, thank yeah. you. Yeah, right. And none of these rules are really what I use. Right. So now a lot of times... <clears throat> so and then I just have three different rule sets of tears Ooh, mm-hmm. and so then I just have to remember that okay. and that help, is very helpful mm-hmm. like it you don't is, have to remember the password you just I remember what's that? that it is but if we have to build systems like that <laughs> then it's a fundamentally broken system yeah. well yeah which oh, I yeah. think we maybe all that's how, yeah that's yeah. the point right by the way so, sorry credit where credit's due it was Parmi Olson who wrote okay. that book yeah. okay sorry but that well, way, I wasn't no, sure no about saying her same. first name oh, right that's what I was actually not sure like if it's pronounced Parmi because I've never seen that name before yeah Either way, you were correct. Either way, okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So, so my, my passwords on my sheet look ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but the logic is that it's this, 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 and you know what I mean? Sure. But if that system's still broken, what would alternatives be? Like, would we just have, like, more doors to unlock? Would, well, you know, like would that. Would we just, uh, there's, I've heard, you know, where your smile can open up, like, you like a picture of your face, you smiling a certain way could... Be a password. I've seen those on phones. I haven't mm-hmm. heard of that as a sort of a mass idea. The fingerprint I mean, yeah. stuff is working out okay, but like there's always a really that fingerprint is really just instead of typing it, like if you do it on an iPhone, right. you're not, it's not replacing the password, it's just helping you enter that password quicker. It's just a different type yes. of data, right? Why, like, could that, yeah. can that still be hacked? I mean, it's, at the end like, of the day, yes. let's put it this way. It still yeah. just translates your thumbprint yeah. into a yeah. string of. Well, yeah, but I mean, whatever. The, th- the thumbprint though has thousands of more like little data points sure mm-hmm. I'm not you saying know? it's not so instead of like 20 characters yeah but I mean everything's hackable but a right so yeah, I see if, saying. if somebody lists your fingerprint you cannot reset your fingerprint yeah right you're not getting a new finger mm-hmm. um Mm. And Ooh. so that one, I guess, is, is probably a little better than one of the ones they. I mean, they do mention that one in mm-hmm. the article. Um, keep hitting my mic. Sorry. It's okay. Um, but like they, uh, who is he talking to? So there's this one example in there where um, Kevin Mitnick, who now works or owns, excuse me, a security company, 
broke into a system that had voice activation by having a conversation with the person, getting them within the conversation to say the numbers zero through nine, right? And you do this naturally. You're just like, how many kids do you have? Three, how many dogs? One, right? You know, I mean, that's not natural, but you can do this. You can mm-hmm. get information like that, records the conversation, and then uses it to like Mission the Impossible system. stuff going down right there. Yeah. True. I mean, yeah. I, I think you're going to, I think you might have less hacking, maybe. Because, if someone has to I mean, build that. Right. As, as but people who record our voices for fun. Yeah. Um, okay, that's I'm a good point. Slightly, <laughs> slightly, slightly uncomfortable yeah. with that we idea. We have 200 and, 250 episodes almost already. Yeah. Just yeah. data <laughs> points. Yeah. This, yeah, at some point we've all said every number. Yes, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's, so there is some give and take, yeah. right? So for yeah. us, the voice activation, or not activation, the voice pass would be Awful. Well, voice, yeah, right. But, I mean, <laughs> voice is better still than a password. Thumbs are still potentially better. F- face scanning is better. But the reason none of this stuff has become mainstream yet is because all of those require a piece of hardware. Yeah. yeah. A password still does not. It requires a keyboard, right. which every device still has. Yeah. We almost have to make this other method of entering this data. It has to be just as common as a keyboard. Yeah. You know? Right. Well, and a that... microphone or a camera or a fingerprint scanner. Cameras might be right. the closest we're at so far. Right, because a so lot too. of people have cameras. And, and this is mentioned in here as well because um, part of the problem is... Uh, where is it? So they talk about with newer technologies like the biometrics, um, they're not very good right now because they're really, really expensive. They're expensive to the point that it's not being used. Well, you need things to be used in order to get them better, right? Okay, yeah. So you're kind of stuck in this pattern where it's not economically feasible to work more on these things, but unless you do that, right? Chicken and egg. Well, it's the same idea as like... um uh, like ethanol cars or hydrogen cars or electric cars or something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, until you have the system to support it, people aren't going to buy it. But right. you can't have the system if people aren't buying it. Right. 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 Um, yeah. I forgot what my other point was. So It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. We just had, I don't mind saying this. In the studio, we have a door behind Crystal Lee here. We have some windows open in the studio tonight, and I think it was just the wind. Yeah, but probably. But in a super creepy way, that door just opened itself up. Just a crack, as if someone were peeking in just to see what we were doing, and slowly close itself and back up. Both, like, so all it. four of us are kind of distracted right now. <laughs> that just happened. Yeah, that <laughs> last sentence didn't make uh, grammatical sense. <laughs> I didn't absorb any of it. I was trying. I Tony was, like, was speaking, trying to hold a sentence together, and all three of us were like <laughs> wide-eyed. What is happening in this uh, room right it now? It was the cat, by the way. Oh, it was. Oh, I think cat. it was Dash, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. But in my mind, part of me was like... I forgot there's right. another cat here. Yeah. I'm like, no, the cat's on the table. Oh, cat's wait, there's right another now. cat. My imagination was going like, did somebody break in through the back door and was like peeking in here? But they stole all your stuff. Oh Haunted. And I just watched It Follows last night, too. Wait, wait, wait. Night Terrors. That's what's going on. There Someone you go. has their cell phone game oh it's just night terror app running oh yeah <laughs> so we were talking so, though about okay so i have a question as far as the cameras are concerned sure mm-hmm. isn't one of the most common things you can find say on social networks is uh someone's face yeah right. yes. yeah so oh, you're right yeah, can you just hold up a picture of someone else I right exactly. you have to be moving maybe like you have to do maybe five four or five different face expressions Oh man, I don't want to do that. But even yeah, that's I know, like, that's really common. Someone who is not very expressive. <laughs> <very expressive. laughs> <He said, laughs> yeah. And you can still probably compile that kind of like animation. Blood. By We're just having to do drops of blood every together. single time. That's what I have to do. It's so, just get a little oh my god. Prick. Oh, oh. Every time you log in. testing kit. Every time you want to log in. So Guys, what I if you know. have a twin really. who's a jerk? Well, that too. I said, what if you have a twin who's a jerk? Oh, so what is oh. so? We're, I mean, guys, this, we're kind of we're abstractly making the point here. Like, how do right. you actually do security? Right, right, and that's and that's kind of when you you made the joke about uh, me bringing in articles where I'm like, here it is, and I don't like it. Um, <laughs> this one is a little different because I'm like, yeah, here it is, and. I agree with you, but I don't have an alternative. Like, yeah. oftentimes, if I don't like something, I will, you know, I will say, like, here's why I don't like it, mm-hmm. and here's what would work better. This is like, I understand this isn't working. I, <laughs> I don't know, which is why I wanted to yeah. talk about it. I'm like, um, maybe you guys will come up with something. I have, okay. 
it, is there a way we could set up a system sort of like uh, I'm on my work computer right now so sort of like a virtual uh, VPN like a virtual pin number mm -hmm. that changes and rotates at every 16 seconds or however long Perhaps. it is and then that would then be your login for everything or at least most things or you could have different settings what are different numbers that rotate i mean those, it's some sort of yeah yeah those do exist um i had a friend who used to work for some high level government stuff not super high level but like oh i i know how to about nuclear high enough energies yeah. and stuff like that and there was a system he you had to go to some place and it was like a watch or something and it would like rotate mm -hmm. or like a little keychain or whatever it would rotate like would, almost literally a codec you would hit the button it would yeah. stop that was the password you put it in within 15 seconds you're in you don't even have to do government i have that on my computer right here yeah so it's i could see that being uh, a so, uh, relatively no, I know, I know. safer solution, a constantly changing password. So um, how I wonder how difficult that would be for, um, like a bank website. So one of the big flaws with passwords, though, is know. that people. Okay, so you know they could make a password just be forty characters, and then a lot of this hacking would go way down because all the automatic stuff would just take a quintillion times longer sure. to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But going back to that human element where you can still, you know, like the forgot my password thing. Oh, exactly. You know, once you have access to your email, like I use, I do use forget my password often. Sometimes you do log into oh, some I, obscure oh. account that yeah. you haven't logged into for a while. Yeah. And honestly, maybe I didn't update that one to my little logic model I've got yet. Mm -hmm. And you go to forget, forget password and sends you an email. You do it and you go. Well, if someone, again, that's that choke point or the opposite of a choke point, entry point really. Yeah. yeah. Of, you know, once you're in the email, you can get all these other direction so even if you're 40 characters or 100 characters or whatever it doesn't change anything if okay if it's a thumbprint it's a million data points a thousand data points but may, but it's still a data set of a face and all of this stuff gets reduced down to a data set still yeah. that's the that's the problem i'm not getting over yet that's, yeah. the, th that's the thing i can't figure out but so, if it wasn't a consistent data set, okay there it sure. is so that's, that's what, what i'm thinking with this sort of uh, rotating mm -hmm. entry thing say i have a physical uh, you know, the credit cards that have little chips in them. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of that, if I want to sign in on something on my computer, I plug it into my computer real quick. It sort of syncs or reads or does whatever, mm. and I can log in. Knows mm -hmm. it's you. Um, and then it's and then constantly it's, it's rotating. Like, yeah. I don't need to type anything in. It's yeah, like a two-piece thing if you... You know, you can't access one without the other. Right. You know. I mean, yeah. Then, then it's I'm just really be a jerk here, but like until the card gets hacked, you know, then, or duplicated or yeah. something. Yeah. Or I mean, lost, and you have to figure out how to recover it. Well, right. There, there are certainly those issues, but I mean, I managed to not lose my credit card pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it would just sort of be like that. Mm -hmm. You know what? Actually, um, okay. So I never got one, so it might work differently, but. Um, People's World of Warcraft accounts were being hacked frequently. Okay. And so you could buy an authenticator, like this physical thing, and then use that as part of your login. Oh. Um, hmm. And was that supplied by Blizzard? No, or you'd have to buy like it. Third party. It was, oh, yeah, it was supplied by Blizzard. Bl 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 Blizzard. Supplied by yeah. Blizzard. Um, I don't know if they made it themselves or went through a third party, but you could get right. it from Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Um. And the only reason I didn't get one, which is why I don't know exactly how it worked, is because I was, it was just before I left the country. And I kind of knew that when I left the US, I wasn't going to be playing WoW. So, you didn't, so I was like, oh, I'll leave you it. You didn't not get it because you thought it'd be too much work. No, if I was going was to continue, right. If I was going to continue to play World of Warcraft, I would have bought it. Because mm -hmm. so, this is what I'm thinking about here. It is a balance. It is a balancing act um, between from, from a company who's trying to provide a service. A company who, like, at the end of the day, Apple's trying to just provide a service. Google's just trying to provide a service. Everybody's just trying to provide their right. service. And if there's going to be 800 different things you have to do before you can even get to that service, like, we're going to see drops in some of this service. Exactly. Yeah. So, so and, of course, of these companies are worried about security. Obviously, they are. But you mm -hmm. do have to go meet somewhere in the middle because yeah. you are going to have the people that are just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And you're going to have the people that are smart, a little bit smarter about it, hopefully. And if all of a sudden everybody has to have some kind of card, which I actually think is a good idea from a logistics point of view, like, you know, the logic of it, 
are people just simply not going to do that? I mean, there's some people like how. Do we just make them? Maybe you do. I don't yeah. know. You're I, sort of balancing like, convenience and security. Exactly. I don't mind saying this right now, but like even my dad, he's technologically inclined, but he is just, he's got maybe three passwords that, he, that exhausts him. That's yeah. it. Yeah. He's not going to really, every time there's another service or another thing, he's got to log into another thing. Mm-hmm. Like that's enough for him to probably not use that service. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people who like hate having super long passwords. Like they will do the bare minimum that the website will tell them to do for the mm-hmm. requirements of a password. Because like, he's okay, literally just don't want to type longer. Seven characters, two digits, whatever. Okay, done. That's it. That's all I need. That's all I want. I just want to get in. And those people are taking right? that risk and, you know, that's all right. It's like, if, if, are you going to lock the doors to your house or not? Yeah. You know, that's not the lock company's fault if you're locking or not right, locking, if right, you're making right. a bad password. Right. I'm serious about some of this. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No, yes. I agree. But I also think you're right about the hassle aspect because um, especially I get annoyed when somebody links something on Facebook and then I click on it and I need an account to look at this one thing, Ooh. I don't do it. I'm like, I'm yeah. not going to start an account. Whatever this thing no is, I, I only Just for the one thing. Right. I only wanted this one thing, but you have now irritated me. So I will go out of my way to not use whatever that mm-hmm. thing was. Yes. Right. We run into this or well, ran into this a lot at my previous job. Um, you know, how, how do you incentivize people to become members? Because as part of marketing, you do get quite a bit of information from that. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, businesses are thinking about that. And that's that's why everything requires a login nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that's not going to go away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I worked at a bar where we could create logins for every customer and track what they drink and everything. Oh, yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, everything. And really. So when you would swipe the card... You could you would put it. You their orders would get recorded, and this is just like a corner bar. Yeah, it was just part of their POS system, though. Yeah. POS systems have gotten to that point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you could like see what they had last time, and so it really helps you. you know, see the trend again, pulling back the curtain a little bit. But you say, right. "Hey, how about another old fashioned?" Eh? Yeah. Well, yeah, this like is... when you you know when you were here last month. Sounds well, like I know it. all that because I saw it on the screen as I was typing in your. Well, that's what rewards programs are. Yeah. You get the customer to carry the card and hand it to right. you so that you can track them. Mm-hmm. Right. The value of tracking them is greater than the value of the savings, that, like or the discounts you're giving right. that customer. Yeah. And we right. all know it. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 And depending on what it is, like there are some places that I, I won't because like I do not like that business enough that I'm going to do that for them. But then, then sure. there's yeah. others that do, right? Like I have a card to Collectivo. They yeah. can just memorize my order because I only get the one thing anyways. <laughs> I don't it's care. It's a really boring report. But, you know, every X amount of mochas, I get that freebie. And that freebie is worth it mm-hmm. that I will mm-hmm. let them track me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. And it helps them know what kind of beans. Uh, they should be ordering more of this or less of that or whatever. Sure. And who sure. these people, if you've, if you've moved to a different Collectivo after a while. Yeah. All yeah. that data is great. We, I like having that data on our YouTube page. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Hey, anyway. as a social scientist, I live on that data. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. true. So I don't know. Passwords, it's tricky. Right now, the best advice is just be smart about your passwords. Try to have as many different ones as you can. Yeah. And try to make them long. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's all it comes down to right now. Mm-hmm. Let's go to break, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit about a space elevator, which, Tony, is, interestingly enough, a different space elevator than the one that you found. It is indeed. Half Com- a year ago. Competing elevators. There are competing space elevators Gosh, right now in the elevators. world. I'll That's... be impressed when I start seeing them build one. Yeah. Well, this they're already up to uh, seven meters on this uh, one. Oh, oh, come do it after the break. Oh, after that'd be a break. really high dive. Okay. <laughs> See you guys in a minute. Hi guys, David Geisler, host of the Technophiles podcast here. You know, we get to cover a lot of great topics on the podcast, but sometimes we want to talk about even more tech-related news. Fortunately, we found a way to do that. I'd like to tell you about another show that we do. It's called the Technophiles Newscast. It's a quick little show that comes out every Monday on YouTube and iTunes. You know, we actually have a really good time doing it. It's kind of become a little bit of a spin-off show from the Technophiles podcast. It's it's a lot like the podcast, but it's um, snack-sized. You can find us on YouTube or iTunes by simply searching Technophiles. We can't wait to see you on the Technophiles newscast, and now back to the show. Okay, we are back from the break, and we will waste no time at all. And I'm going to jump right into a story that I found about a space elevator. And we jumped in so quick that I didn't click my link. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Way too fast. I was trying to come in at an organic moment there. We were having mm. our own little conversation. No, that was thought, a real moment mm. right there. 
indeed it was. Yeah. So, um, Tony, why don't you, um, about a half a year ago, you found a story about a space elevator. Why don't you give us about 30 seconds of what that was all about? Uh, sure. I'll specifically highlight the differences, I guess, from what you will talk about here. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea was to make single-walled carbon nanotubes, which are very light, um, but have very high tensile strength and build that to make an elevator to go into it's uh, again it's not geosynchronous orbit orbit but it's lower earth orbit of those but it's, things lower yeah. so it, it you know it's traveling at the same speed as the earth is rotating mm -hmm. it's a I'll, little bit I'll of, think of the word it's a little bit of you hold, tying a string to a rock and spinning around and there it is and it stays out there because you're spinning around a exactly. little bit exactly it's it's mm. that sort of rotational um, mm -hmm. lack of centripetal force that is holding the the space elevator up. The idea then is it would make uh, especially space travel but also space tourism um, significantly cheaper because you're not mm -hmm. using that fuel and those resources to escape the Earth's pull, which is the really expensive part of it. And I think the one we talked about back then, they were talking about a pod that would take like 16 hours to go up or something uh, like that on yeah, the inside it was, of it. It was, yeah, somewhere in the teens of hours, and then mm -hmm. they were also thinking for tourism, people would love to kind of see the view on the way up. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Right. Absolutely. And we thought that was really cool. And I got to be honest, when I came across this article, which I actually found on CBC News, so cbc.ca, um, immediately got really excited because I was like, oh, oh my gosh, someone's building it. They're going to do it. Well, as I read this article, I found out, this article is by Emily Chung, I found out that um, this is a completely different company working on their own idea for a space elevator. Yeah. So the concept of a space elevator, it's cool that it's in our world right now. It reminds me a little bit of like the Hyperloop stuff. Like there's for a while there, there was different contracting mm, yeah, entities yeah. that thought they could build it better than the other yeah, one or whatever something. Whatever happened mm -hmm. to the Hyperloop? It's it's happening. There's a, there's a group, they're building some test tracks in Texas right oh, now. Oh, really? And I think, well, it's happening in that there's like one or two companies that said, that's it, we're doing it. Oh, that's, okay. I don't know. I hit that. I hit a couple headlines on that a few weeks ago, maybe oh. a few months ago. I came across something, but I tell you what, if anything real happens, we'll definitely talk about it on the show again. Please, yes. Hyperloop. I think that could be good. I miss Hyperloop. Um, so this was actually what this is. A company called Thoth has an idea for a space elevator, and the uh, owner of Thoth, or the head, uh, that the chief technology officer over at Thoth, his name is Ben. Quine, I'm going to say, and he has an idea to make a space elevator that does not go up into lower Earth orbit, believe it or not, because, you know, we imagine like once we're in lower Earth orbit, once we have this centrifugal force holding this thing out there, the amount of mass doesn't matter too much. In fact, more might even help hold it tighter. You know what I mean? We could put a whole freaking hotel up there or whatever, a launch pad, whatever we need, right? Yeah. Theoretically, mm -hmm. if it's all held by nanotubes. Well, we can't fully build these nanotubes for that that many and that like that technology is not there yet and tony i think we did speak about that quickly a half a year ago yeah i think the longest sort of carbon nanotube like a couple uh, of feet wasn't it yeah it's it's a it's a matter of feet and not miles not that's what's really holding it back although um that is increasing at a quick rate for mm -hmm. other purposes as well not yeah just it kind of sounded like it was like it's a matter of time but it's certainly not in the cards right now exactly yeah. and and it truthfully probably is a matter of time maybe 10 years maybe 20 years who mm -hmm. knows yeah. but um in the meantime ben here has this idea to create a space elevator that goes up i think what was that he right now he wants it to only go i had that here 20 kilometers high which takes you up quite high um two times higher than the tallest building on Earth right now, which is the Burj Khalif, right? Khalifa? Yeah, in Dubai. Uh, it's in Dubai. I always accidentally just call it the Dubai building. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you just call yeah. it the Mission Impossible 4 building. Really, let's face it. Yeah, there you go. You know? Uh, that's Khalifa, by the way. Khalifa? Yes. Thank you very I much. I had a check. <laughs> I know. I appreciate that you did. Appreciate that you did. So, but, so you might be asking yourself, well, wait a second. If it's not out in lower Earth orbit and it's not hanging from strings, how the heck does this thing hold itself up? Right. Well, he. It, this reminds me of a story that I. There was a moment in like a behind the scenes for the making of episode one, Phantom Menace. I know this seems obscure, but just go with me on this. Uh, well, it. it's got to be a great idea then, because yeah. <laughs> there was a moment where when they were designing the character of I think his name was Wado, and I think he was like the kind of flying alien that oh, basically yeah. sells Anakin to He's Qui a toy Jin. Yeah. What's that? He's a toydarian. A toydarian. Very good. Okay. Sorry, Excellent. guys. Well, 
he has very small <laughs> wings. He has teeny tiny little wings. And when they were designing this character, yeah. the animators were like, George, the, there's no we we gotta like make this look physically realistic. There's no way these wings are gonna hold him up. This character, you know what I right. mean? Yeah. yeah. We got this guy who looks like, like he's a, forty pounds yeah, and he's got these like little teeny totally fairy wings. Schlubby, yeah. And George Lucas's response was, well, just how about his belly's full of helium? Let's just have it be that his belly's full of helium. Then it would be okay. And they're like, okay. And they actually kind of tried to go with that a little bit. They actually changed some of the masks because that's what George Lucas said. And I, they said this in this making of. And I remember thinking like, oh, man, what a, what a cop-out. Just fill it with helium. Just yeah. fill it with helium. Yeah. Well, I don't think that this space elevator idea is a cop-out, but that is Ben's exact idea. <laughs> Let's just fill the thing with helium. Oh my so gosh. what they're or proposing, hydrogen. or hydrogen is true, hydrogen <laughs> or helium right now, which is funny. They're proposing that they would take um, a bunch of concentric rings, and I don't know exactly what they'd be made out of, but maybe just metal right now, tightly bound with helium and hydrogen in them. You almost build it like a silo, mm -hmm. really, where you build the silo top down. Um, yeah, okay. you when you build like in a farm, back in the olden days when <laughs> there were farms. David grew up on a farm without shoes or cell phones. I did not, but I do I'm have joking. some. I do have some dairy farm roots in Prairie du Chien, for what it's worth. My uh, my dad's side goes back a little bit, and there are some oh. farmers there. So I actually I did learn how you build a silo. I saw I did in fact actually see one being built, which was cool one time vacationing to the family in Prairie du Chien. And of course they build the top hub, lift it up a few feet, build the next part, lift it up, build the next part, build it up. So that's how it works. It's a similar concept here with this space elevator, um, except they'd be filling it with helium as they go, and the. The idea is that this thing won't go all the way up to, to lower Earth orbit, but it's going to go like a third of the way. In other words, when a rocket launches right now to go up, even like a SpaceX rocket or anything, right. it has to fire. Rockets only last so long. They're, they weigh certain amounts. So a lot of times these rockets obviously have stages, and those stages are... You could imagine the one big rocket might actually have three rockets inside it that's helping mm -hmm. it get. And it's, yeah. the first stage is going to get it up so high, right. so high, so high. Every single stage, every single rocket that's burning inside this bigger thing that we would still call a rocket costs a lot of money yeah he feels that 20 kilometers up is actually high enough to take care of that first stage so perhaps rockets could then launch from this space elevator half you know like i said a third of the way up there already yeah i i immediately start thinking of like well if a rocket's really launching from there it has downward force and like yeah. what does that do to the elevator i don't know if that's really necessarily what they're worried about maybe they're thinking a little bit more about things that can go more horizontal and fly yeah. up into our orbit but regardless his math right now says well we can get a third of the way there i think we can do it mm -hmm. he thinks he can do it in about 10 years um what do you guys think they think that there would be a platform right now He's looking for investors and all of this. And it's been approved. The patent has been granted in the UK and the US already. So he really kind of wants to go forward with this thing. Thuth, the company Thuth, wants to go forward with this. And right now there's still a lot of debate about like, would the platform that goes up be on the outside of these containers? I call them containers. I don't have to say this big, huge cylinder. Yeah. Would the platform be on the inside? Um, how do you guys feel about this? Tony, how do you feel about it knowing what you know about the first space elevator? I... Uh, I think it's interesting how they're trying to get around this problem of not having cables that have the are light enough and have the tensile strength enough. Like you yeah. said, um, you know, the the elevator that they're envisioning that I thought was interesting would essentially sort of hug like three quarters of the way around. So, yes, the column is almost a, a crazy clapping, f flapping, flailing arms man. Like, yeah, it's almost so like, wiggly, <laughs> whatever they are. Whatever yeah. it is. Wiggly, yeah. wiggly man. Yeah. It's basically one of those going straight up. Yeah. And then they were thinking of putting a track on the outside. So then the elevator would climb. Right. So rather one. than have a traditional cable elevator, right. it would just sort of hug the wiggling arm guy mm -hmm. and then just climb up uh, move its way around on wheels mm -hmm. uh, just like traditional engine yep um, because apparently at this height even at 20 kilometers the cables that we would use for elevators right now actually s snap under their own weight at that yes. point once it gets oh. that high they but can't I, even support themselves what i don't understand with that is um it would actually collapse significantly more quickly if it were in a coil shape yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Um, There's not a whole. Well, I don't think these. Well, well, the coils. What I collected from this article is that the coils that they're proposing wouldn't be a single cable. It would just be tra almost like track it would pieces. Then sort of uh, independent okay. track pieces. Okay. Well, okay. Let's. Just, uh, however, they get around. They're all, each That's fair. every. Let's say every section oh. of this would only be ten feet tall, and yeah. that track piece would so just be connected like to stacks. that. Sure. 
cone, that Cheerio, yeah. that or that <laughs> as long as it's strong enough to hold it up individually, sure. yeah. Right. So, so that's where so I'm going the way with this. like my like little home ec version of this would be like a tin can and a tin can on top of each other, but mm-hmm. there's like a pipe cleaner that goes around. <laughs> but the pipe cleaner would only go cleaners. around each tin can. Right. So in other words, the, the the pipe cleaner that's on the tenth tin can up is not holding the weight, or or rather the one on down on the first tin can is not pulling down on the one on the tenth tin can. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So, they each have their own kind of force. To keep they support themselves. Yeah, is the idea. But yeah. um, the other sort of um, problem that I think they might run into, um, as we learned many years ago, hydrogen. Uh, <laughs> hydrogen is very flammable. Huh? What? Uh, I know. Although readily abundant, um, there's a reason we don't make blimps out of hydrogen anymore. Yeah. Um, the but. Okay, so use helium, right? There's a helium shortage. shortage. So helium is actually kind of really expensive, um, even in sort of research quantities in a lab. Getting past all of those. Okay, that's so right. we, we found a way around that, and that's great. Um, I'm, I'm, full, I'm on the record as fully on board for a space elevator. If it's... Um, I, well, I, I think last time we talked about it, maybe not... Maybe the tourism, they're sort of overestimating how much people want to ride up on this. But for the sort of ability to enable space flight adventures, etc., yeah. yeah. research, I, I mean, I think that's sort of the next step if it's feasible. Yeah, I think the problem here is they're thinking about, they're th- <laughs> basically they're saying like, oh, we can't get to low orbit. Well, how else can we hold this thing up? And, like, should we put more technology into just trying to get to low Earth orbit, or do we try to make, like, a halfway system yeah. like this? I don't know. Is it know. a good investment? Um, yeah. I, I, again, I'm not being an engineer, it's hard for me to say, like, this seems flimsy in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, where, where is the carbon nanotube idea, at least in principle, works based on tensile strength? Mm-hmm. Right. Um it's it sounds interesting. Someone had to have done the math. They do mm-hmm. want to try to make a 1.5 kilometer, um, uh, like mock up, like a full, yeah. full, like a test run that mm-hmm. only goes one in a, one and a half kilometers up. Which that actually is twice as tall as the Burj Khalifa. Yes, I got it wrong earlier when I said the whole thing would be like three times taller. Or whatever, it'd be so much taller yeah. than any building we have. Twenty kilometers is so you know. So yeah. much higher than yeah. one and a half kilometers. That's yeah. like but even the test run would still be speed? twice as tall of anything that we've built from the ground so far. That's around cruising Chris speed. Lee, you were going to say something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, now I also have something to say uh, briefly. I got, which I got a cohort, said, sorry. Um, Hey, I advocating for it. actually Absolutely. don't doubt how uh, popular it would be with tourists. I would only doubt the tourist's ability to pay for said ride because I'm sure it's going to be more than five bucks, which yeah. would be yeah. my current limit. Um, but mm-hmm. I'd love to go up there. Um, no, but actually, so while you were talking, I was listening, but I was also kind of scrolling because you had mentioned about the um, pushback if they launch from there. And I had just came across this article that I was planning on using for my next newscast. Okay. But I couldn't find it. And I must have saved it on my home computer, not my iPad. But um, it, it was something about this this new rocket method that would basically not have that problem. It, because it pushes it out or something sideways or... And I, I wish I could remember. Like I found the if article. Find it, and I was let's talk like, about it next week. Oh, if yeah. you can find it again, let's make it a really topic on this show next week. I wanted to do it for the newscast. Well, you can do it for the newscast. <laughs> if you find it for that too, do it for that. I don't mind. Okay. It's all good. All right. Well, anyway, so this space elevator is <laughs> happening. I think we can. I'll oh, definitely. I'll come back to you in just a second, yep. Tony. I think yep. if 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 own at the bare minimum, maybe we can at least learn some things here as uh, as as people on the planet like you know what i mean like if they mm-hmm. try this and it kind of works or it doesn't work or whatever maybe we do go oh man we have to wait for the carbon tubes or maybe we go okay maybe there is something going on here apparently it can survive hurricanes and everything in their models yeah tony what yeah. were you gonna say oh uh just for a little context um because we we're talking about maybe how high things are uh so one and a half kilometers twice as tall as Burj khalifa on um, 20 kilometers um for reference uh, the cruising altitude of a 747 
is right around 13 kilometers. Oh. So this would be very higher tall. than Higher than airplanes go. Yeah, so significantly. Almost, yeah. what, two-thirds of the way? Yeah. So are they going to yeah. put lights on it so that the planes don't hit it? In theory. I mean, if it's... Maybe it'll just bounce off. It's inflated. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, like that. Yeah. What I was mean, that? Oh, no. Everybody's thing. up on top. There's only on top one. And they just feel like a... Thunk, oh. There's only one. I would assume that we could... They could make a dead zone around it. It's a dead zone. around it, right. Yeah, yeah. But. Sorry, I just thought it would be really funny to have lights on it. So All the way up. Did they say... It looked like stars. Oh. The thing I'm always curious about this uh, project is where are we going to locate it on the Earth? They're putting this one on a mountain. Yeah. Well, at least they want to try the first test run on a mountain. Like how high of a mountain? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me see if I can find it here. Because then you're making it prohibitively hard to you get to the actual... Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. Oh, so no, here we go. There. And is another... F- no, I think the prototype wouldn't be on a mountain, but they're thinking that the 20-kilometer one... The 20-kilometer one, would they found a mountain that's five kilometers above sea level already. It could be could built there in 10 years geez. for the cost of $5 billion is what they're saying. So... Like, that seems so Five kilometer high mountain, get, is that what you're searching? To get all yeah, the supplies there and is. just, yeah. like, to construct it on top of a mountain well, without... Well, according to their like, math, it's five billion wow. to get everything over there. So that's a 16er uh, for any a mountain climbers that? out there. It's over 16,000 feet, uh, five kilometers. Got it. So we're talking... It's really high? Yeah. I mean, a f- like a 15er, let me see... Uh, sorry, someone else if yeah. you, for a minute here. Um, so I just noticed because I'm sorry I didn't read this beforehand. Um, they talk about using carbon nanotubes in this also, right? Um, yeah, for the cable, I guess. Um, they were gonna cons- they were considering that technology here to maybe pull. You could make it like a traditional elevator with cables, right? But since that technology doesn't exist yet, they're gonna do this little crab walking thing, right? Um, so both well. I also like how they talked about putting an elevator for people on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine that? Well, the owner, uh, this, this Ben is definitely a visionary in that sense. And oh, he says, definitely. I want it to be on the outside for the view, obviously. He said the safety people are going to probably want it, want on, it the on the inside. inside right. But, uh, um, but, you know, if you're... I think they could make it work on the outside. I really do. Like, if yeah. you're putting in this much research, this much energy, money... Make it um, a little fun. Right, make it a little fun. <laughs> like so it's too. possible. You are only limited by your imagination. It's true. Well, I think we should get going here, guys. This was mm-hmm. cool. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. We talked a little bit longer about this than I thought, but it's all good. It was very nice. Yeah. Kind of a longer episode tonight, but I'm all right with it. We talked. We kind of kind of just threw a lot of stuff on the table and yeah. saw what com- came out of it. Both yeah. of these conversations tonight. Tony, uh, you got tall, it. Taller than Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney's only 14. Uh, okay, so. This would be 16, so significantly higher. Wow. Sorry to be the numbers guy. We have to like, guy, do a search and find what mountain might that, that might be. Uh, Mount yeah. Steele in the St. Elias Mountains is right around that. Interesting. So okay. Fair that's in the Yukon Territory. Fair enough. Tony, if people want to tweet you and talk to you about which mountains <laughs> they like to climb. About numbers and such. Numbers I'm, and such. They can find you on Twitter at... I'm at Tony underscore Stig. Marvelous. Miss v Loves. People can find you... They can find me at bear underscore Annika. Great. And if anybody comes up with the most amazing way to save passwords ever, they can tweet Krista Lee Malone at... At Gamer Anthro. Fantastic. We love it when people tweet the show at Technophiles Pod or find us on Facebook and iTunes by searching Technophiles. Of course, you can go to our actual website, Technophiles Pod... Oh, I do that sometimes. It's not the... You can go to our actual website, technophilespodcast.com, where you can find uh, show notes to this show and also check out some of our other episodes of other shows like the Technophiles Newscast and Branching Dialogue. All right, guys, I guess we'll see you on Friday. Maybe we'll have some news about this crazy sideways rocket. Maybe not. Chris at least nodding. <laughs> we'll see. Unless you no. newscast. I saved it somewhere. The question is where? It might, it might be Too a newscast many devices. By then. If it's a newscast by then, that's fine. It's all good. All right, guys, have a great week. Mm-hmm.